Good evening and welcome to possibly the most exciting episode of this podcast we're ever going to make. I've been looking Lord. forward to this one for a while. Um, it's a lot of pressure. Well, I did title it Larry Long Unleashed. Y'all are going to get to see the Larry Long special that I've been talking about. So <clears throat> one of our drivers um, sent us an email. One of his buddies um, signed up for a lease with a carrier, 2022 Peterbilt. And our guy tried to tell him what a bad decision this was. Sent him to the podcast and everything. And the guy's like, nope, nope, this is what I'm going to do. And so he, he got a hold of the contract and sent a copy of, us to, uh, of it to Larry. And Larry read through it. And it is an absolute disaster looking for a place to happen. And so Larry is going to go through this contract with you. We're going to, um, you know, hide the names to protect the guilty. <laughs> um, but God almighty. I mean, listen, I've done a lease. I did it. I did it at ATS. And it, you know, it, it looking back on it now, obviously I would never do it again. Uh, but this one, man. Gosh, mighty! This this this, uh, it, this ought to be criminal. It, it really should. It 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 ought to be illegal, uh, but it's not. So we're going to go through this, and um, I'm just going to turn him loose, and <laughs> I'm just going to let him let him have. Have you got your technology figured out yet? Ah, uh, well, I don't know. If I show the slideshow, I can't see me or you, so I just have to. Okay. You have to assume grin everything's all right. You'll have to let me know if it's okay. not. So. Well, go ahead but, and turn on your screen, your screen sharing so we can see your, uh, can you see it? I uh, cannot yet. I don't have anything. You might have to hit share once you bring share. it. Up. All right. Let me do that. Share. share. Y'all have no idea what it's like for me to try to get him to do no, technology. No. Keynote share. How's that? I got nothing. So I guess I'm going to have shared on my end. So, I can see it. That matters to you. <laughs> uh, <clears throat> while we're while we're doing that, let's before we jump into the actual lease. Um, I, you know, we brought this up at the live event when we first introduced <clears throat> this lease. And um, there you go. I can see it now. And we, you know, we were had been talking a lot about things that cause people to fail in this business, you know, and and I was trying to get people to think about the mindset it takes to for someone to want to do this. You know, we we know it's a bad thing. We said you just said it ought to be criminal, you know, but yet hundreds if not thousands of people sign these every day you know mm -hmm. and nobody goes to jail you know now a lot of people go to bankruptcy but it 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 makes me wonder and i think i used an analogy at the uh, live event i said look if i told you that on the other side of the parking lot's a million dollars but only nine and a half out of ten of y'all are going to get there the rest of them are going to blow up how many will run out there and start doing it? And of course, nobody would do it. But yet, the majority of people who do this are going to end in bankruptcy. But that doesn't yep. slow them down one bit from running out and doing this day after day after day after day. And these leasing, and these, uh, and, and we're going to stipulate here this is actually a trucking company leasing their trucks to. Yep. What they call owner operators. I call victims. And you lease a truck and it's already been leased two or three times before, you know, but that doesn't set off a red flag with people, you know, and, and we try to break it. I'm a pretty good root cause kind of guy. You know, I can look at a problem and I can kind of wipe the blood away and put the bone back in the skin and I can kind of figure out what happened. You know, well, hell, you tripped over this and broke your leg, you know? Yeah. But this one even stumps me. I mean, how, when we, you know, we, we have a slide we use, it's called broke, desperate, and stupid. But how broke, desperate, and stupid can you, do you have to be to do this? 
you know i mean it's so hard to find you know we're 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 making a big deal of this because we got our hands on one it's hard to get your hands on them because they don't let them out you know you got to sign it while you're sitting there and they take it back away from you after you sign it and nobody ever sees it again it's like it's like the masonic lodge and you know nobody knows what goes on you know so you have to have this lease. You have to have the, you know, the grand master in front of you. You know, you have to swear to secrecy and, you know, uh, the, with the penalty being death. And, and if you divulge any of the details of it. Oh, by the way, I had another guy call me today from another major lease carrier offering me his. He said, he said, you know, it's way, he spelled it W-A-A-A-A-A-A-A-Y. Way too late for you guys to help me, but maybe you can help somebody else. So I'll send you mine if you want. So I haven't responded respond to him yet. But, but you know, I'm, I just, it still makes me hard to understand how badly you want to do something in order to sign something like this. I mean, it's not an easy thing to sign. You have to initial every page. You know, how many th- times... Does something have to make you go, oh, this just doesn't, you know how you get one of those emails and you start going down and you're thinking, it's probably not what I'd be doing. I'm probably giving away some information I'd not be, and you kind of back up and try to back off. How far do you go down this path before you go, you know what, that, that why are they making me initial every page? You know, why, why this, why, I mean, but yet they just sign it and go on. I doubt that anybody's ever read this thing except me. That signed it. Um, I don't know. I'd like to hear your thoughts on that. You did it. Can you not hear me? Can you hear me Man, now? Could you hear me? I ask you a pretty important question. I'm really bad. Uh, Maybe I should dance. Man, I'm Can't getting this. Uh, Maybe I I'm getting this head quality thing. You're welcome, Smoke Bomb. Glad you were there. Hope you enjoyed it. We had fun doing it. Is it going to work? We can just talk. We don't really have to have it if you don't want to. That's not my problem. It uh it's it's the connection again. I don't know what that means. Well look, uh, forget the slides. I can I'll just talk through them slow, okay? It's not that big a deal. All right. I, can I do it? Can I put it on my end? You can. You know, if you didn't live in West Virginia, if you lived in civilized world, you'd have enough bandwidth to do this. <clears throat> right? Well, I'm gonna try something different here. Can you hear me now? I can. Is that better? Yeah, much better. Okay. It's it must be my mic. Um, you know, I I'm having to use my iPad here. Okay. Um, it's it seems to be working well. So, are you going to be able to do the slides? Yeah, I'll do the slide from the. Um, uh, yeah. Okay. So go ahead and start talking. I've and, been uh, talking. I asked you an important question. You didn't answer it. <laughs> yeah. Sorry. What was it? Well, I was just talking about how desperate people had to be to be able to sign one of these. And, you know, what, what the, um, 
it doesn't slow them down. They do it every day. And I just was going to get your imp- input on what your thoughts were on the mindset of someone who would be willing to do this. You know, you mean you, you did it. Well, it, it went back to desperation. You know, it was, it was, I was so desperate and I, I literally couldn't see another way to do it. Um, I had no money. I had, um, no, no belief that, um, I, I could save the money. I could make enough money as a company driver, um, you know, that I could do it. And, um, you know, and, and so it was doing what everybody else did, you know, that, that was the whole thing. And, and, and I would run into, uh, I was watching this video today about, um, uh, a friend of mine sent me Pollyanna narcissists, which was, a, a, a you talk about a psychological wormhole, but it was, it was this thing about how people would, they would talk up really bad ideas and convince you to join them in their really bad ideas because they had such a rosy disposition. Well, th- these companies wouldn't do anything wrong to us. I mean, it, th- th- this is not a bad thing and I'm going, you know, and so, um, <clears throat> well, boy, you, you open a lot of possibilities. <laughs> there. Yeah. Sorry. I don't know which one I want to go after first. <clears throat> um, you heard me say many, many times that in, in when I put my conspiracy theory hat on, this lease purchase thing from a carrier is nothing more than a driver retention program. Nothing makes you more happy to be a company driver than to get your ass handed to you on a lease purchase. And then you'd be glad yeah. to go back and go, ooh, that didn't, that didn't work. But, you know, I start putting myself in the, in the in the shoes of the person who would do this. All right. And, and, and you start it, you know, you're people choose to be truck drivers for different reasons. You know, a lot of them, it's the lack of wanting to socialize and be by themselves. Some of them want to see the country or so, <clears throat> but it's a pretty, it's a pretty isolated world, you know, to spend, you know, 24 seven for weeks, days and weeks at a time inside basically a six by six jail cell that's on wheels with a window in front of it. (laughs) And the only outside connection you have is, you know, your radio, your phone, you know, occasionally somebody will roll the window down and throw something in at you, you know, and you have a lot of time to think. I I think I compare it to solitary confinement and that That'd be rough, wouldn't it? Have to sit yeah. there and just think all day long, you know. Well, that's kind of what you do when you're driving down the, down the road in a truck, you know. And you've got a lot of time to think, and you start thinking about how everything that you hate about your job, okay, everything you can fix it if only you could call the shots. Now here, here's where the desperation begins, okay. Everything I hate about driving, you know, I hate my dispatcher. I hate where they send me. I hate the people I go to when I go, when I see them. And on and on and on and on and on. You know, I don't like driving here. I don't want to do that. Don't want, you know, if only I were in charge. Mm-hmm. And that just <laughs> festers. That just, that just yep. festers. Well, now, how can I get in charge? Well, I need to be one of them owner operators, you know? Well, let me think about that. Let me call my bank. Can I borrow money to buy? Hell no. You don't even pay your rent. How are you going to pay for a truck? We call my wife. What do you think? Hell no. We don't, I can't even afford food. All the sources for financial support to do this go away because they, they know when your bank doesn't loan you money, there's a reason for that, okay? Yep. They're in the business to loan money. That's what they want to do. That's what they're there to do. They would love to loan money, except there's a problem with that. They like to get paid back. And the track record of people buying trucks, that track record sucks when the payback comes, part comes back. So they go, no, I think we're going to do that. I think maybe if you come up with 50%, we might let you borrow the other 50% at a really exorbitant 
interest rate. Yeah. Cause they understand the risk that's involved in the driver doesn't. And the fact that they're, they're, um, what do you call it? Their, their, uh, exposure. No, the, the, the asset, the truck, they're, they're, I can't think of the word. Collateral. Their collateral. Thank you. Is on wheels. And I, I can't go over yeah. there and just repossess. I don't know where the hell it is, you know? Yeah. So it's, it, so the, this now the and even if you go to a regular leasing company that leases stuff, sometimes they even turn you down. But there's one place that they'll never turn you down, and that's a carrier, especially if you work there. Some carriers will actually walk you through the lease lot during your smoke break at orientation and just kind of measure and see what your temperature goes up, you know, and see if that might be something you'd be interested in. Because here's the deal. Here's what, here's why carriers are in the business of leasing trucks. All right. If you were an employee, you're there, you're, you're, you have some, some guarantees. One of them being you're, you're going to, um, you know, you're, you're, you're going to get some kind of benefit package. Okay. And you're going to, you know, you're going to make X number of dollars. And so they give you a truck to drive and, and they're, you're an employee and, and, you know, now they've got, I don't know, a bunch of these guys out here and business turns up and turns down and they need more of them or less of them or, or whatever. Or they can give you one of their trucks and call you an owner operator and take all the benefits away, saves them money. They no longer have to do the maintenance on that truck that you're driving because that's your responsibility now. So now they've got a truck out there being paid for by former employee with no maintenance expense to the, to the company and no benefit package. And it's out there hauling their freight and they have, they, they, you've taken all the risk away from them and giving them all the benefit. And they are, they know you want to do it because you hate them so bad. You do anything to be able to call your own shots. So that's yeah. where this all gets started. So, Anyway, that's why someone will sit there and fester for 14 hours a day, six or seven days a week, and finally convince themselves that the only way they're going to be able to, you know, stop hating what they, what they really want to do is to be in control. We find this out all the time. I mean, the biggest, the biggest challenge we have because we we hire basically former company drivers that want to become owner operators, is that trans that mental transition from entitlement to provider, and it's it is well ingrained in this society, you know. And it and, that uh, realization that you are now all those people that you hated before the load well, planner, the dispatcher. Well, you don't even realize that at first. You make this yeah. decision doing this, you think that well, hell, I drive a truck. I'll drive a truck tomorrow. It'll just have my name on it. But that's doesn't it doesn't work that way. You know, bless her heart, Carrie. You know, she's the first two or three days of owning her truck, she's had to deal with some issues, you know. And it just that just comes with it. I mean, she's yep. fully prepared for it. I'm not saying she's not, but the realization is wait a minute, now this is mine. Okay. I no longer have a maintenance department. I no longer have a dispatcher. I no longer have the I'm all of that now. And by the way, I still got to haul freight and make a living. Have so, you ever, have you ever heard of the book QBQ by Dan Miller? Have not. I think it's, is it Dan Miller? Anyway, it's QBQ. Question behind the question. And the premise of the book is talking, it's personal responsibility book. And he talks about how you have to change the kind of questions you're asked. You're asking, meaning you have to change your pronouns instead of saying who, who? And when is somebody else going to do something about the problem? How and right. what can I do? Right. Um, and we see that a lot. You know, Every it's day. like Every drivers day. come to us and they're all fired up. Man, I want, I, I'm, I'm committed and I'm going to do this and I'm going to be an owner operator. And the first sign of trouble now, who's going to do what about? And I'm like, hey, 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 Hoss, it's you. Right. You're, 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 did you call the agent? No, I ain't going to call the agent. Won't you call the agent? And I'm like, 
Right. You know, who, why, why don't you find a shop? You know, I, I mean, I, obviously I'm going to do all that stuff for you because that's my job. But I, my job is also to teach you how to pick up that phone and call somebody, you know. Well, I even listen, I've got Landstar BCOs that contact me that want, cause they hear on the podcast how, you know, what our guys are doing. You know, how we got a guy, get a guy last week do 13, over 13,000. His, his, his paycheck as a company driver for me last week was three, over $3,000. Okay. He'd been with us for, I don't know, two or three weeks, month. I don't know. Not very far, not very long. So people hear this. And so I get BCOs calling me going, well, how would I get that freight? You know, <laughs> cause they think it's the freight, you know? And I'm like, well, here's the deal. You know, I, I can, yes, I can dispatch you and I can put you on our freight, but you still won't make the money. You know why? Because you have too many restrictions. See, a guy comes here that makes that, his restrictions are, hey, what next? Okay. Your restrictions mm -hmm. are, oh, no, shit. I don't, oh, no, no, no. I can't go. I don't go up there. Oh, no, 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 no. I can't pull anything over. I don't know. 35. Th hell no. I can't pull that. No. Leave on Sunday. Well, that, well, I've got to take care of, see, there, it's not the freight. Mm -hmm. It's not willing to do what it takes to do what they think. So, I mean, we have this magic freight here that we, you can come here and you can be the biggest, laziest ass that was ever lived and you'll make 13 grand a week. That's what they think. Cause we got this magic freight. We sprinkle this dust on the low board and we have freight that just falls in our lap that everybody can haul. It can make tons of money. That is how this works. No, you know? our guys work their ass off and we tell them that you're going to do that for about a year and a half. And when, I mean, not, that, when that's all, it's done, gotta be 99% of every load that we haul comes off of the board. I well, mean, yeah, I mean, it's some way we're in. I mean, we know there are situations we know who to call. You know, right. I've got a driver here. Hey, I can call this agent. Hey, I need that load. Yeah, but, but, but it's most of it's just getting on the load board, finding a load, call the agent, book it, let's go. You know, and 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 here's the other thing, okay. And we said this for our secret is stacking loads, okay. Yep. Now stacking loads puts a whole lot of commitments on you now that many many people are uncomfortable with. Okay. Oh, oh yeah. no, I know how that works out. So they're not <laughs> willing to do what it takes to live up to the commitments because they don't, they don't want to, they, they don't, they don't want to change anything to make it work. They want to come here and do everything they did before and just have the benefit of going home with $3,000 in their pocket. It doesn't work that way. So anyway, let's get back on the topic here because people who want to do this and haven't got any other way of doing it, the easiest way is to grab a huge tub, not the kind you get at, at CVS. You got to go to Costco to get this size of tub of Vaseline that's going to take for you to get through this program right here. Okay. Oh, my this, goodness. This is not going to, this is not going to go in easy and feel good when it comes out. Okay. I can, I can promise you that from the very get go. All right. So this is a, and we're going to leave the names out. This is a lease from a big U.S. carrier. That does a lot of lease purchases, um, and they're one of several. You know, I, I don't know. Yeah, that, they're not special. No, they're nothing about. There's nothing about them special. And um, we got this because one of our guys has a friend who is doing this. Matter of fact, he says he's going to do it five times. He's going to have. I don't know about that. Okay, bless but anyway, let's, let's bless him, Jesus. Yes, yes, yeah. I'm, you know, I mean, it's and the only, you know it's funny to laugh about this, but you know the bad thing about it is it's it it it, it it's a shame. I mean, I mean, yeah. somebody, you know, well, a lot of bodies, you know, are going. You know, we already know that the vast majority of people who buy trucks for the first time become owner operators. The majority, the high majority of them fail. A lot of, them. um, yeah. most of them. And, you know, one of the, one of the biggest reasons is this lease purchase thing. Okay. There's not a lot of things in the world that you can, uh, you can say without any hesitation, never have to worry about eating these words, but this is one of them that I've always said, you know, 
if you're going to lease a truck, which I, we don't encourage you to do that any, any, at all, but if you're, if you're going to lease a truck, if that is your route, at least go lease it from a leasing company. Because that way, if it gets bad and you fall out with your dispatcher and you can take your truck and you go anywhere you want to and start all over again. Yep. You lease that truck from the carrier like this lease there is, and that's a marriage there is no divorce from, even though it was sold to this guy as a walk-away lease. And I want you to remember that. He was told <laughs> this is a walk-away lease. That's what he was told. All right? So let's start. This young person is going to get himself a 2022 Peterbilt 579 with a back arm motor. No, mm. no, it's Cummins motor. It's Cummins motor, isn't it? Yeah, it was yeah, it's Cummins. Yeah, it's Cummins too. But it smells good on the inside too. <laughs> well, it's got that new truck smell. Yeah, wait till he re- wait till he listens to this. That one of them seats ain't gonna smell so good, okay? <laughs> so it, the lease is for a hundred and four weeks. Now, the very thing, he, very first thing he has to do is come with twenty five hundred bucks. There's a cash security deposit required up front. To execute the lease. So you gotta walk in with that. All right. So that's on the counter. Twenty five hundred dollars cash on the counter. And you're gonna have a hundred and four, that's two years. You put an at in there, it's two. You're, you missed oh. you missed that's two years at a thousand dollars a week. And the word rent is exactly the word they use in the contract. Rent. Hundred that I mean a thousand dollars a week rent for hundred and four weeks. Okay, so you can already do the math on that. Okay, now because they're afraid you won't file your twenty two ninety, they're going to do that for you. But instead of you paying five hundred and fifty bucks like the rest of the truck world does, you're going to pay six twenty four just because they're going to do it for you because they assume that you're not smart enough to do it. Or you'll be so broke after doing this lease, you can't afford to do it. <laughs> <clears throat> now, along the way, anytime you're late, that rent payment goes up by 150 bucks a week. And it stays at 150 bucks a week until you become current again. So if you get behind a week and you're behind a week and behind a week, it's, it does that stays at 150. So your rent now goes to 1150 a week until you get current again. Now, <clears throat> a payment, these, now when you see italicized, that's, that's verbally, that, that, that's taken verbatim from the lease document here in front of me. A payment is unconditionally and absolutely, and pretty strong words, okay? Mm-hmm. Unconditionally and absolutely, okay? Do every week, regardless or whether the truck's running or you're off or whatever, you know, there's no loads. It w- Whatever the reason is, unconditionally and absolutely do every week. Also, this carrier who, who this lease is with is required to deduct the payment from your settlement every week, regardless of how much your settlement is, even if it puts you in the hole. By the way, if it, if it puts you in the hole, you have until the next payment date to pay back what was not paid by your, by your carrier. Or that puts you in default, and we'll talk about what that means. It says on here specifically, this is a net lease. Now look at italics, at italics again. All cost, expenses, liabilities associated with the truck are solely the responsibility of the lessee. So in other words... Whatever happens, it's on you. There is no remedy here, okay? There is no um, pair, a golden parachute. There is no safety net. There is no, this is yours to take care of and only yours to take care of. Now, to help you do that, we're going to uh, allow you to, um, um, well, I'm getting ahead of myself. Here, here's the next, uh, here's the next uh, thing. Every 25,000 miles, you must take this to a Peterbilt or a Cummins dealership for an extensive PM schedule. Steelership. 
Every 25,000 miles. Now, you can't go to Carl at TA. Mm -mm 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 -mm. Can't go to Speedco. You can't, you've got to go to a Peterbilt or Cummins dealership every 25,000 miles and have them do this. Did you put that in the slideshow that long? I did. Okay. Now, if you, and also that you have to go there for your annual, you know, let's forget Landstar. This was not Landstar. This is another carrier. So they have to have obviously an annual deal and it has to be done by the Peterbilt or Cummins dealership, not your guy that, you know, he's got to go there. Okay. Failure to do this is a $50 fine and you now are in default. Now we'll talk about what default means here in a little bit. But that's not what you want to be in, is in default. That's when that tub of Vaseline really got to come out, okay? <laughs> now, let's take a look at what these things are going to be, Chris. Go over that. Well, that's really small. Can you go over that real quick? I mean, it, it's a regular PM, but. Yeah. So, you got change oil and filters, change air filter, check rear end and trans lube level, grease tractor, check coolant level, freeze level of coolant, coolant additive level, which I don't know why they have that on there. It's, you know, all these trucks have got red coolant. Um, check wheel seals, alternator, air governor, heater, cab, sleeper, operation of all lights, accessories, wipers, horns, clutch, fire extinguisher, gear shift, doors and windows, fan clutch, hood locks, belts, oil leaks, fifth wheel, air tanks, coolant leaks, fuel air leaks, exhaust leaks, clutch linkage alignment, AC cooling, uh, items missing. If, if there's anything gone to radio, mattress, deck plate, other batteries, tires. Uh, why do they have, cause I took this straight from the lease. Why they have tires in all caps like that is, is interesting to me. And all the, the condition of the, of the, uh, list tires that are dipping. Now I bet you what's interesting about that is after our, um, seminar that we did with Mike, uh, Beckett, these brand new trucks come out of the, uh, <clears throat> off the stimuli line all over the place. And will destroy tires in a in a matter of of, of months because the alignment sucks so bad. Uh, all electrical connections, radiator mounts, engines mounts, kingpins, bushings, U bolts, steering, battery, broken springs, brake linings, flex exhaust clamps, universal joints and yokes. So now, it's a pretty standard inspection, but. Um, Go ahead. I mean, well, think, I was say, when you when you go into the t TA and buy the ultimate PM, I don't see any of those things on the list. Do you? I mean, yeah. I mean, they do do that stuff. Um, it's a part of the ultimate PM. The problem is at a TA, that's probably going to be that ultimate PM, but you go and ask a dealership to do all this at $150 an hour while you're paying them to, uh, take smoke breaks and eat cheeseburgers. And, uh, I mean, I, this would be a thousand dollars at a Peterbilt dealer. Well, we know how much some of these PMs are, cause we've got a couple of Kenworths that we are running for other drivers. I mean, other truck owners. And those, uh, just, just a set of filters for one of those is almost $400. Just, just the filters that you use to, to change. Not, none of the labor, none of the oil. So anyway, not going to be a, not going to be a, one of those little three or 400 RPMs you run down and get done, you know, TA, you know, plus let's think about this. How long do you think it's going to take to get that in and out of the dealership? Oh my God. A week. You know, yeah, yeah. You you're not you like you're going to drop in? They're going to do that for you and get you back out in a couple hours. You know, so think about that. And um, by the way, that payment is unconditionally and absolutely due, even if you're sitting yep. at the Peter, Peterbilt dealership waiting to get this done to save that fifty dollar fine. All right, let's get back to the lease. Mileage is limited to eighteen thousand miles per month. If at these intervals, if, if at, at week 26, it's more than 108, and at week 52, it's more than 216, and week 78, it's more than 324, then an excess mileage fee kicks in of $325 a week, plus $0.06 cents a mile on all excess miles. 
Now, that's probably not a big deal for most people, but we know that the person who's doing this lease is a team, and there's no way on God's green earth that they're not going to have this mileage, excess mileage penalty. <clears throat> the, uh, the truck will be fitted with a GPS, and all expenses are going to be charged to you, including the monthly airtime. You must participate in a downtime plan for the entire term of the, of the of the lease. You misspelled that too, Chris. At fifty bucks a week. Now a downtime, I, I'm going to go ahead and say for the record that all I did was bust this up and make it bigger and easier to read. I had nothing to do with the spelling there, Mister Long. No, you busted that up, and you that I didn't do that. I sleep with an English teacher. I will. I wouldn't have done that. Okay. So. Okay. Go ahead. Whatever makes you feel better. A downtime plan. I had to ask this question. I didn't know what the hell it was. But somebody at the live event said, well, it's a thing where you call in when you have a problem and you pay 50 bucks a week. And it wasn't insurance. They, to help me with this, Chris, they covered, they, they called somebody to work on your truck for you or. Um, yeah, something like that. It, it, it was, it was, it was partially that, but I think it's also, it, it's kind of like an insurance, but the problem that I had when the guy was telling us that, cause it was the same kind of leasing company, the same three letters, uh, well, 104 weeks at 50 bucks is what? 500 some dollars, you know, four times, times 50, 50 5,200 bucks. Okay, so fifty two hundred bucks. All right, that's going to cover what five of these lease payments? I mean, it, it's oh, so it so it covers your payment if you're down. Is that what it does? I think I believe so. I, I, thought, I think I that's didn't think you said that. Well, anyway, yeah, whatever it is, something like that. You got to do it, whatever it is. It's a scam. That's what it is. It's a scam. No. <laughs> Now, if you decide that you don't like being with this particular carrier anymore or they terminate you or whatever, you decide that you want to move on, you can move the truck to a carrier of your choice, assuming that that carrier agrees to do settlement deductions of all the stuff that this leasing company requires. Okay, so they got to agree to do everything that the carrier was going to do who leased you the truck. And there's an extensive list of those. I've just pulled a few of them out. It also requires a $10,000 additional security deposit plus <laughs> four weeks of rent paid in advance. These guys ain't never seen $10,000. I think that would probably discourage most people. And the new carrier must meet the lessor's approval. Now, the lessor being a carrier, how friendly do you think that's going to come? Oh, yeah, well, let's go over there. Yeah, no, go ahead. Well, but technically, technically, the carrier's not the lessor. The lessor's another company working with the, probably that. owned by the carrier, but. I get that. I understand that. But again, you think they're going to be, they're going to go along with this freely and go, oh, yeah, just yeah, you go ahead and go. Well, if you could take one of these trucks to Landstar, for example, and, and you had all the, all the appropriate skills to find the right freight and you work 365 days a year. You could probably make fifty or sixty thousand dollars a year. <laughs> you think? Maybe. <laughs> I like this one. In the event the truck is totaled or stolen or whatever goes away, <clears throat> there's a, a chart called stipulated value, and it's a predetermined value of the truck at every week during the lease. Now I didn't put them all in there because I'd still be typing, but I hit the high spots. Yeah, but. Within 30 days, it's on you to pay that stipulated value. The lessor then takes the truck and the insurance benefit goes to you. Okay. Now we'll get to that in just a minute. And at the end of all this, if, if everything still goes well and you, you survived it, you can buy this truck for $78,000. Now, Chris, is after you've paid $104,000 for it. Let, let's I need that stipulated value. It's a, it's down almost the last one. All right. So here's this again, there's 104 actually there's 140 of these because I guess most people don't get get finished in two years. So they stay for another third year. But I just pulled out the first year, first six months in six month increments. 
So week one, the very first week, the stipulated value of the truck is $156,000. Okay. If you total it at the end of week, at the end of a year one, the stipulated value is $129,000. Okay. So you got to pay that. All right. And then whatever the insurance pays you reimburses you for what of this that you paid. Yeah, at the end of week four, worth one hundred twenty nine thousand dollars on day one. Right, right. I didn't say it was fair. I'm just telling you what, what <laughs> what's required. Right. At the end of week, at the end of one hundred four, when you can literally go buy it, there's the stipulated value. So they're telling you right now that they think this truck's going to be worth one hundred and three thousand dollars at the end of week one hundred four. So keep that in mind, okay? We're going to go back to visit this. So now, Chris, let's go back up and talk about what being in default means. <clears throat> default. I'm assuming everybody knows what default means. Default means that you violated the terms of the contract. Okay. And yeah. that it is subject to being canceled and repossessed and all that sort of stuff. So anytime your rent payment is more than five days late, you're in default. And also don't forget you have a $150 late fee until you get it back out of default per week. If the carrier terminates you, you're in default. If you abandon the equipment, you're in default. If you commit any act of fraud against your carrier or the lessor, you're in default. If you fail to maintain that truck and that schedule, that 25,000 mile schedule at the Peterborough dealership, you're in default. If you let your insurance lapse anywhere along the way, you're in default. If you go bankrupt, you're in default. Regardless of whether you keep paying the truck payments, if you file bankruptcy, you're in default. Failure to provide financial records because you also have to participate with ATBS uh, to do your books the whole time you do this. It's a requirement. <clears throat> so anytime they ask, you've got to give them your records. And you have to participate in an eight-week intensive consulting program when you start this lease, any, any violation of those is, is default. Now, what happens when you go in default? <clears throat> well, here's what happens. It becomes what's called early termination or as Richie's friend said, walk away. Walk away. Well, here's what happens when you walk away or when you go into default. Immediate and unconditional forfeiture of your $2,500 security deposit. Or if you moved it to another carrier, that would be $12,500 security deposit. <clears throat> Loss of all escrows. Maintenance, tire, any kind of escrow automatically goes away. Enforced collection of, and here we go, italics again. Costs arising from the recovery and returning the truck to pre-lease condition. All the attorney's fees, uncollected rent payments, taxes, fines, and any other remedies upon the breach of the lease. <clears throat> now, what part of that sentence right there has walk away in it? Not a place. Let's say it again. Enforced collection. Of all costs arriving from the recovery and returning and re return the truck to pre lease condition. This truck has 944 miles on it. <laughs> now, what do you think it's going to cost to get that truck back to that condition? Plus, anything you owe them, all your, all your uh, late payments that you have made. If the tires, are not at the tread depth that they were when you when the truck was leased. They had to be brought back to that tre tread depth. Now, what do you think the tread depth is on a tire that's got 944 miles on it? Well, part of that's walk away. At default, your weekly rent payment goes up to $1,500 a week in four-week increments until your default is earned. So you get into default 
until you get out of default, your your weekly payment just went up to fifteen hundred bucks a week. That's to help you get out of default, by the way. Give you a little assist, a little little leg up. <laughs> <clears throat> Besides the fortune of the security deposit and all the escrows, there's an early termination fee of two thousand dollars, not to be construed as a penalty. <laughs> Not to be construed. Please tell me that that should have been in italics. It should have been. That, oh that, is, that is verbatim. Not to be construed as a penalty. So there's your walk away. How many times have you heard that term? But but it's a walk away lease. Which means they plan on they plan on walking away from day one. Yeah, well, yeah. It, it's just like it's just like try before you buy. You know, I mean, now you remember, I'm a little older than you guys are. Back in my day, you know, this uh, this um, uh, test driving your the the car that you're getting ready to marry mm -hmm. didn't happen too much. OK, you know, there wasn't that wasn't the way things happened back in the late 70s and 60s. So anyway, <clears throat> now you uh, now you got the car. You're stuck with it, okay? So this uh, this, this walk away thing, you know, I mean, it's it's a popular term to walk away. Um, but the only person here that can walk away is is the is the, lead, is the carrier. <laughs> you know, they can walk away because at any point in time they declare you in default, everything that you've paid, you, you're never going to see that again. Every, you can make a hundred and three payments. And there's a question over here from Andy. Does the carrier guarantee miles? Well, that would be a different <laughs> contract. That's a contract between the truck and the carrier. But I can tell you right now that they don't, which is no. I, I started I started this whole thing out saying that there's very few things in the, in the world where you can say always or never and never have to worry about eating those words. So I'm going to tell you what they are right now. OK, never, 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 no exceptions ever lease a truck from a trucking company for that very Ever. reason right there. Okay. Because all they have to do is make it hard for you to make that payment somewhere along the way. And they get that truck back now and they can do it all over again. And you're now a happy company driver. That, that dream of yours is gone. Okay. Yep. <clears throat> So, let's look at the numbers, Chris. Next one. There we go. All right. So, let's assume that all of this goes good, okay? You never were late. You never had a problem. Everything happened just the way it's supposed to happen. Because, you know, in trucking, that happens every day, right? Oh, yeah. Don't we never have, have. Well, aren't most days things just go the way they're supposed to go? We never have oh, an yeah. issue like that. So in 104 weeks, you never missed a payment. You were never late. You know? Everything went the way it's supposed to. So at the end of this lease, you have paid $131,000. Now, let's go back to that stipulated value page. At end of week 104, what's the stipulated value of this truck? $103,000, okay? Yep. Now, let's go back to what we've paid. We've paid $131,000. Well, not too bad. Only $30,000 more than it's worth. Except, now to buy it, you've got to pay $78,000 more dollars. So it's now insane. if you put this together, you just paid $100,000 for the privilege of buying this truck from this leasing company. $100,000. That's only 50000 bucks a year. Well, yeah, okay. <laughs> Here's the bad part about it, okay? <clears throat> What's a, what is a company driver going to make at this company? Does anybody know? Chris, do you know? Richie's on there. Richie, do you know? What's a company driver make at this at this at this particular carrier? 
probably, depending on, you know, how diligent they are, they could probably make somewhere between fifty and seventy five thousand. Company driver. Company driver. With zero Maybe. with with zero possibility of having to pay any of this stuff right here mm-hmm. or be at risk for any kind of maintenance. And by the way, who's going to pay that maintenance bill? You know, that that, that's not even in here. Okay. Also, what's, you know, what's not in here? Fuel. Even if you couldn't make the $1,262 a week payment, fuel's going to be another $1,400, $1,500. Okay. What's, uh, what, you know, there's your escrow, but what's the maintenance actually going to be? Richie says 50 to 105, depending on what you do and how often you go home. Okay. So let me ask you a question. What do you think that this person here is going to make after paying this? So Richie, help me here. <clears throat> what is this person here going to make after paying this $131,000 at the end of two years to drive this truck? Not counting all the fuel he's going to buy. I mean, the point I'm trying to make here is I don't believe that this person here is going to make more than he did as a company driver. Oh, hell no. I think he'll make much less. And I think, and he, and he has all of this risk, but yet the reason that he did it was because he wanted to be in charge. He wanted not to have to do the things that he hated before. Right. Mm -hmm. Or I want to own my own business, own my own truck so I can make big money. Now, what if shit didn't go right? Mm. Let's take a look at this side. What if he is late a time or two? Going to be. <clears throat> what if he does exceed the mileage? We know that this is going to be a team. They're going to exceed the mileage every week. Yep. So it could be this much a week or this much a week. Reality is it's probably going to be somewhere in between. And oh, by the way, if this is a team, what's that truck really going to be worth at week 104 with how many miles on it? With a million miles on it. Yeah. Well, they'll easily run. I mean, if you're, because that's what they do. They sucker these guys into becoming trainers and then make them lease trucks because they know the only way they have any prayer of, 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 meeting these obligations and, and having anything to take home is to be a, a team. Um, and so, you know, the truck's easily going to run 200,000 miles a year. So the thing's going to be half wore out by the time they get done with this lease, 400,000, 500,000 miles. And, you know, uh, how many weeks will it not run a week a year? I mean, let's face it. Well, we don't have any, we don't have even Richie doesn't stay out 52 weeks. No, how many weeks a year is this not going to run? You know, at least four. And then how many weeks is it going to be in the shop with emission problems waiting on at parts least right eight? Now? Yeah, there's 12 to 15 weeks this truck won't run. And what's that going to cost? Hmm. You see who benefits here. They got all this truck, important they got question. This truck run. I got this truck running and hauling their freight. They have no risk and they pay you half what they pay a company driver. It's a great deal. It's a great deal. But let's go back to the original question. Why would somebody do this? Do you think they explained this to them when they signed the lease? Do you think oh. that this has been deconstructed like this and explained to them? Do you think the, the thing is all highlighted like I've got it? <clears throat> nope. Do you know why it's hard to get one of these? Because they don't let you, they don't let them out. My wife's concerned I'm going to get it, have a hit put on me tonight for divulging this. <laughs> Your life insurance paid up? Yeah, it's paid up. 
<clears throat> but it, it look it, it didn't it took 30 minutes for us to explain this how how what a bad deal this is even if you succeed at it which most don't it's a rarity that somebody completes one of these it's a rarity even if you do what have you got you've paid okay let's go let's take the best possibility if nothing went wrong, you're paying $210,000 for a truck that they're telling you right now is worth $102,000 before you start. And you know their stipulated value is inflated by 20%. You can't insure it for that. Nope. You never get that forward from an, with an insurance claim. I, I just, I, you know, I did, I honestly cannot tell you, you know, why people do this. Why are you so desperate? Well, part of it, part of it is that you pay a hundred thousand dollars for the privilege of it. And that's if everything goes good. Well, that's what I was going to get to. Part of it is there's something in this society that says, well, it's not going to happen to me. You know, right. what happened to that guy? But I, I'm, I, I'm, I, I know what I'm doing, of course, which is what leads them down this road in the first place, because they think everybody, the load planners, the customer service people, the, the dispatchers, they're all, you know, we ain't never drove truck. Well, well, logic goes against that. You know, if nine out of 10 people that do something fail, what makes you think you're special? How are you going to be the one out of 10? You know how many people go to the NBA every year versus how many people play basketball every year? But yet, we hold that out to, oh, you go, go, Johnny, you go do this. You can do this. No, you can't. No, you can't. We just finished the Olympics. There's 5,000 medals given away in the world. In the world, 5,000 medals were given away out of how many billion people on this planet? Seven? Mm -hmm. Eleven? I don't know what the number is now. <laughs> a lot. And 5,000 people got a medal. No, you're not going to be a, an Olympic gymnast. You better do something else. You better go to welding school. Yeah. What do we call that in our plan? In our, um, what do we call it in our presentation? Something. I can't think of the term. False now. encouragement. No, we don't know. I don't think it's false, but yeah. You can they do make this. it. You can do this. They Go make on. it. Here, I'll, I'll help you sign the contract. Well, here's here's what kills me. Okay, I, I've mentioned before that for the first ten years that I was in this business, I was lied to about it by the industry. Right? Oh, you can't make no money as an owner operator. Little man can't get ahead. But at the same time, hey, here's the keys to a truck. You can be an owner operator. What? Well, which is it? I can or I can't? Oh, you mean I shouldn't go be an independent owner operator because I can give a lot better service than the mega carrier. So I shouldn't go do that. I should not engage in the marketplace and provide better service than they can, like I do every day. What you should do is come and lease a truck from us and pay all of our expenses for us and take all the risk, and we won't have to pay anything for you, and our, we can go to our shareholders and say, wow, look at what our operating ratio is because we're doing such a great job selling trucks, not hauling freight. It ought to be criminal. If I, if I was somebody that believed in making stuff illegal, this ought to be illegal. <laughs> but I just believe people should stop doing stupid stuff like this. Um, you know, and, and but, you know, they're, they're, they're absolutely incapable of asking questions. And we see this with our, with our trainees that we have to spend the first 90 days teaching them how to ask questions, teaching them how to think. And logically. How, how to ask the right question. Yeah. <clears throat> well, I still go back to this, uh, to this theory though, this conspiracy theory I have that, that these, these companies lease, you know, it, you're right. They're making a lot of money off these leases, okay? But more importantly, 
they're keeping a whole lot of drivers, company drivers, because they're 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 giving them just enough taste of how it is and how bad it is doing it this way. Yeah. That it it definitely uh, something to that, yeah. You know, here's the other thing, Chris. Of all the trucks we've owned, have you ever had anybody being refused to be loaded because of the age of our truck? Not once. Or the condition of our truck. I've been so, I've had I've had a couple of Landstar trailers rejected, but I've never had one of my trucks <laughs> rejected. So here's another thing, you know, you, just, you, know, you know me, I'm a, I'm a, I'm a numbers guy, I'm a money guy, okay. I don't mm -hmm. listen. Trucking to me, it, it's just a means to an end. Okay, we could be look. We if 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 drugs were legal, we could do it. With drugs. Okay, this happens to be legal and moral, and I we can. It's easy. Okay, it's easy yep. because of this crap. Okay, but here's the thing I'm trying to say. If you pay thirteen hundred dollars a week to drive this truck, let's just say your business model works. Okay, let me just give you that, but you won't. But I can go do the same job, and I don't pay better. anything a week. Okay, you can go do the same job better. I'm, I'm just more gonna give them all that. I'm just go, let's just compare the money. Uh, okay, all right. Why pay thirteen hundred dollars a week for an item, a tool? Let's call it a monkey wrench. To do a job that I can take a monkey wrench for and, and have no payment. And I work all week and do the same thing you do, and I make thirteen hundred dollars a week more than you do. Mm -hmm. Explain that to me, Mister High, High Tech. I well, I think part of it is that fundamental lack of understanding about the market and how it works. They they don't, you know what 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 do we find out? This contract was ninety two cent a mile plus fuel plus fuel surge, right? Right. Okay, <clears throat> if they're giving the whole fuel surcharge, and I'm not convinced they are, all right, <clears throat> but I'm getting right now anywhere from, what, 35 to 40 cents, depending on how generous the agent is with somebody else's money, I'm getting 35 to 40 cent a mile fuel surcharge. So let's just call it 35. So 35 and 92 is $1.27, right? Right. So they're getting a buck twenty-seven a mile. I mean, my God, in this market – uh, we're way, this is to the truck money. We're way over, a, over a dollar 27 right now in this market to the truck. We got to be, be in the two fifty. You'll be, you'll laugh on it. I put this, I put this in our, how to make money at Landstar spreadsheet. <laughs> <laughs> I'd love to, break, to see that. You know the break even point is, huh? $8,000 total revenue to the truck to break even. To break even. <clears throat> Holy shit. So our, you're talking about 8,000 gross. 8,000 total revenue. Okay. So what we're doing, right? Okay. All right. Y'all, let y'all, everybody buckle up for a second. Okay. <laughs> We've just raised our weekly minimum up to $8,500. Okay. And this week, well, with the exception of that thing that happened on Friday, with a let's see, well, 10, 10 running this week, eighty five hundred minimum. Every single truck hit eighty five hundred. All right, and the drivers in these trucks were making twenty to twenty six hundred a week. Okay, and we were getting paid, and and our truck partners were getting paid. Everybody's getting paid at eighty five hundred. And basically, what he just said was that. In, in our situation, we make 8500 bucks, and everybody's getting paid and getting paid well. With this lease, you make 8500 bucks and you're breaking even. That's it. Yep. Holy shit. And that's if nothing God, goes wrong. Wow. That's not paying anything for any repairs or anything. And that's assuming it's going to get seven and a half miles a gallon, which it may or may not. I don't know. <clears throat> God, but the point is, take trucking out of it. Mm -hmm. Okay, let's talk about bubble gum machines. You're going to put a bubble gum machine in the mall. I'm going to put a bubble gum machine in the mall. Okay, yours is going to have to make eight thousand dollars to break even. 
and mine's going to make eight thousand dollars, and everybody's going to make. I don't know. We're going to make four, three, four thousand dollars out of that deal. Okay, driver's going to make two thousand. I'm going to make, I don't know, a thousand. Yep. But they're both they both sell bubble gum. So what I don't get about truck drivers. But, I hate well, money. but wait, wait a minute. <laughs> I'm the slum lord of Landstar. Remember, so. Mm-hmm. Yeah, well, you know what? <clears throat> I don't know about you. Everybody I know that's in this business that would be gone tomorrow if they didn't get paid. The money stops tomorrow. Everybody that I know in the trucking business is gone at home. Okay, <clears throat> we're doing something else. Rock, so, Rocky so, just dropped a bomb in the comment section. Those same people are asking for a COVID bonus to haul a load that's already paying way above average rates. <laughs> Thanks, Rocky. Bring that. Never let a good Thanks. crisis go to waste, right, Rock? <laughs> it, it, it. The money that. The money that people waste. I mean, you know, and here's here's the here's the bad part about it. you know. I I get these phone calls. I get the we see Chris. You, we get them. Yeah, I mean, company, oh, yeah. Driver, company driver all of his life, he's 55 years old, and all of a sudden he woke up and he realized that, wait a minute, I'm not saving any money. I don't mm-hmm. have any retirement. I don't have it. I'm going to work till I drop over dead if I don't do something. And that bell rings at 55 for some reason, okay? Mm-hmm. Or 65, a couple of cases. I never saw that coming, but I've, I've been shocked to see it. Yeah. Oh, hell, I'm 55 and I ain't got a pot to piss in. It's time for me to do something about it. But all those other years you did, you this 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 was okay. And now it's serious time. You screwed your whole financial life away. But I'm the slum lord of Landstar. Right. <laughs> Laundry Matt King. Right. <clears throat> I can teach you how to make money, I'll tell you that. It ain't gonna be this way. All right. <clears throat> Who cares? It's a tr- it's a tool. I was the highest paid wedding photographer in in probably in the state of Kentucky, certainly in my area. I didn't have the fanciest camera. I didn't have, my, my, it was a tool. It was strictly yep. a tool. Okay, what it did for me was make a lot of money, just like a lunatic truck does for me. It makes a lot of money. Okay, isn't that what we're here for? Are we here to look pretty or are we here to make money? You know? But your trucks cost more to operate. No, they don't. That's a nah, complete, hell no, they that's don't. a complete myth. Okay. My it's trucks can be worked on. You know, that's yeah. We well, I don't know if we told you, but we we got a Kenworth. <laughs> understand that we don't i don't own it okay i only operate it for another driver who can't keep a driver in which is another kind of interesting thing you know um well mm-hmm. we, won't get, we won't get in there right? that's, <laughs> that's for another night but, um <laughs> this thing spends a week at a kenworth dealership and after a week we just give up i had to go up there and he thought i was going to go up there and 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 smack a few heads around him, but i didn't we went up there we took the truck back we took it to carl said carl we got to have his truck in a couple of hours just it's been there a week see what you can find out hour later he calls chris he goes come get your truck it's fixed <laughs> Came one deal, you know listen and five. i and i had here's the best part of that all right you, you gotta have the context i had a driver with me okay who has listened to the podcast and heard all about Carl and you know, you know how they are. They just don't believe he's real. Right. They just don't believe. It. And so we ride around, you know, for an hour and we come back and he says, yeah, I got it fixed. Well, what was wrong with it? I was missing a fuse. And dude, look on, on Frank's face at that point was like, holy shit. He's real. This dude is, it's 100% real because they, we were, we all, it was a, it was a field trip. We had for five or six of us in the damn truck that went up there to pick up that truck. And we saw all the excuses and we listened to all the, 
you know, and the service manager even said, he's like, well, man, 150 bucks an hour, you just can't go fishing for stuff like that. I'm like, well, hell, Carl did at $126 an hour and found it in an hour. Don't you think I would rather pay 150 for you to find a damn fuse? Like, but, but they can't. But, but listen, but listen, here's what you're dealing with. Forget about this part, okay? We had special order part that they do not stock, have never, ever stocked, okay? Oh, yeah. Paid for it. Took it up there, and when they dropped that truck off, we said, put that special order part in there that we've paid for and find out why this wiring thing, why this electrical thing is not working. Five days later now. Five days later, they've had this truck. Five. Yeah. You know how much money you lose in a truck in five days by it sitting there? Right now, 1800 bucks a day. So we go up there to get it, and they haven't put the part on. Well, we can't really find the part. Really? Well, there's one on the shelf up here, but they got nobody's name on it. We don't know. I'm like, okay, let me just wait. Wait a minute here, genius. Okay. We've told you that we've, here's the part number. Okay. Here's the freaking invoice where the part number, it says paid. Okay. You've got one in there on the shelf that you don't know who it belongs to, but you don't stock it. And I'm needing one to put on my truck and you can't put two and two together and come up with four on this deal. <laughs> and, and then you want, and then on top of that, you can't find a damn fuse. And you wonder why I told somebody, I told everybody at the live event, if you ain't never, ever, ever going to see Larry Long's name on a title of a truck that starts with a KW. Okay. For that very reason right there alone. I wouldn't deal with them crazy some bitches if it was the only truck left. Yeah. They had to ask permission from Kenworth to change this to the damn speed cruise control setting on it. Mm -hmm. Not the owner and, of the truck. Not the and, person that are paying the bill. They had to ask Kenworth if they could do it. I said, well, ask Kenworth if they can kiss my ass and see what they say. <laughs> Did I not? And don't forget that in order to find the pinion seal, they had to call Kenworth for that, too. They can't just look up a pinion seal. They have to send it to Kenworth, and then Kenworth has to send it back to let you know what pinion seal is. I could call, I could call Carl right now on any one of our trucks and say, Carl, what's the pinion seal? A three, four, five, six, seven, eight. And he'll just rattle it off. But no, not Kenworth. No, we got to send it to the corporate to get a damn pinion seal. It's got a headlight problem, and you can't even fix it. Yep. You can't fix it. But you can go lease one of those trucks for $150,000. Well, no, we want to say $210,000. God bless you. Knock your little self out. But you're not in business to make money, okay? Business people don't make stupid-ass decisions. Or they're not in business very long. Is it any wonder why 9 out of 10 people who do this fail? Because it's a stupid, ignorant business decision. Now, I'm sorry if I hurt your feelings. But if you sign one of these, you're an idiot. Especially after tonight. Yep. Who well, could I, be that desperate to do this? Let's just give $100,000 of money that I don't have away because I can't go get a job and save money and be patient enough to go out and pay for this truck myself where I own it. You could have bought this truck for half what they're selling to you for. We didn't have a warranty. Well, yeah. <clears throat> you guys see this comment, Mike Frey. I know from experience it is a scam. I have 16 days to pay off. My truck has over 740,000 miles, and I grossed a dollar 28 per mile. I have been a fool. Mm. Mike, I'm sorry to hear that, but I'm glad to see that you've understand that. You know, I talked to a guy. There's a guy that called me up. Now, now you know. He has a set of cojones, okay? Call me up and said, you know what? I heard you talking about these letters purchases. I've done, I've done five of them. I'm like, dude, how old are you? 
He was on, I forget what he's like 60 years. I said, so in 65 years, you ain't come with enough money to buy your own truck? Oh, no, no. I go, I do one and do it over again. I'm like, God help me. Good thing we're not, <laughs> good thing we're not face to face. One of us would be shot, you know, not sure which one. He was proud of that. I did. I've done. I've completed five of them. These lease purchases. There's the okay. best part of this comment. I, I can hear this being read in Richie's voice, but I want to be comfortable. <laughs> okay. Well, I don't know what else to say about it. It's just, you know, you, you would think that with us talking about this, it only uh, it'd be an exceptional rare case that somebody would do this. But this is how most people get into business. This is how most people come to Landstar. They go lease a truck and bring it to Landstar. Now, some of them lease it from a leasing company. And those are not quite as bad, but you're still paying way too much for the truck. And it yeah. still is it's got a lot of issues in it. You know. Well, I like what you said. You pointed out that this this pay this lease was twenty two pages. And the lease that we had we got hold of from our guy that was lease going to lease one from a leasing company was what? Seven six, six or seven six pages. pages. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Well that that's all I mean, there you go. Did you see this picture the other day? Uh I guess Congress finally passed this infrastructure bill and this, this dude was carrying like eight or 10 reams of paper. He's all like, it's 2,600 pages. Listen, if there's that much bullshit hit, hit in this 22 page, can you imagine what's hit, hit, hidden in that 2,600 page infrastructure bill? Right. right. God help us all. <laughs> exactly. Well, I, you know, I, I, I I, I just don't understand why this is the way that, you know, we're lunatics. <laughs> Our way is just, it's crazy, but this way is okay. This way is normal. This way is a, in really, I don't know. Maybe it's me. Maybe I am crazy. You know, this trucking thing attracted me because it was very easy for me to see not being from the trucking industry, the possibilities. I, 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 when I first told about this, Chris, I, I told Chris, I, I said, you know, I saw the opportunity and he jumped on that phrase right quick. Saw the opportunity. Mm -hmm. But it was a tremendous opportunity. I mean, in, in, in 2008, I was 55 years old and I'd never even been in a truck. You know, I went to CDL school went to work at Transport America for eight months and made them let me be an owner operator, bought a truck, put it on there. Here it is, 2021. How long is that? 13 years. 13 years I went from not even being in the business to now being in a fleet that at, at, at the rate we're at right now will be doing quite almost $4 million of the business for Landstar this year. But I don't know anything about truck. I'm a lunatic. I know nothing about this shit right here, you know. <clears throat> I'm, it, well, he, he's bragging. No, I'm not really bragging. I'm just telling you how stupid this industry is. I wouldn't have done it doing it this way. Never would have happened. And all we're trying to do here is keep us, you know, we're on a crusade to stop this. You know, if, if you want to remember me, remember me for the guy trying to stop this crazy shit right here. Okay. Yeah. You don't have to do this to be in be in trucking. Okay? You don't have to you don't have to do a lease purchase. Like this guy says, here, get a good job and save your damn money. That's why you can't be, that's why you ought not be doing a lease purchase. You can't save any money. This is a force save. You know what escrow accounts are? Forced savings. You know why you pay twelve dollars a week to have your, your twenty two ninety filed here? Because you can't do it. You can't save five hundred and fifty dollars a year and do it. So they make you do it. They know how stupid truck drivers are. Really? But yeah, we do. Somebody, I got to find that comment. Somebody said, uh, 80% Renee Garza, 80% of truck drivers are running away from something, divorce, family issues. That was 100% me. 21 years old, 
running from stuff. And hey, guess what? That shit chases you down the road. It hides in the sleeper. <clears throat> you can't get away from it. Listen, there's plenty of opportunities, Ben. You don't listen. You, I, I don't care if you like me or not. I don't care if you ever, if you, if you never come here, if you never listen. I don't really care. Okay, look, I'm good. All right. Chris drug me on this thing, cricking and screaming, want me to, you know, to tell my story. Well, my story is quit doing stupid shit. You know, <laughs> how about saving some money? How about quit spending everything you make? That's what's wrong. It, you know, let's go to root cause. Just pull the blood away and put the bone back in. Let's get the root cause here is nobody saves any freaking money. You spend more than you make. You know, you borrow money to buy shit to impress people that you don't even like. That's what Dave Ramsey says. Yep. And then you get 55 and you freak out and you call me and want me to fix it for you. Landstar sent me a guy this week. Well, I'm about to lose my truck. Yeah, tell me about it. Well, I did that. Yeah. I'll do anything to save my truck. I'll pay any price to save my truck. I said, well, the only problem with that is there is not a price that you can pay to save your truck. Now, two or three years ago, been an easy price to pay. Well, see, you will pay a price. You can choose to pay it now, or you can pay it when you don't have a choice. But if you do stuff like this, constant bad. You know, we have this program where we talk about seven reasons that people fail as first time on rappers. And I'm going to change that to two. Because <clears throat> really, in two seasons, one, one, and really, there's only one. But we'll separate out not having any money from making bad decisions. There's the two reasons: undercapitalized and a whole bunch of bad decisions. Yep, that's the only two reasons. Here's an example of both of them: no money, so you go pay double for a truck, and a whole bunch of bad decisions, including this one. The ultimate bad decision. I, I get tickled on Facebook. What's the best least 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 purchase out there? I get on there and say none. Of course, I start all kind of shit storm. You know, <laughs> I have to quit doing that. I, uh, uh, you ain't gonna quit doing. That's too much I fun. I really slowed down though. I actually said something this weekend made me fun. Made me, it finally got to me. Anyway, it's funny how this virus is so smart. It can figure out that sophisticated people. At a former president's birthday party, it doesn't hurt him. But a bunch of good old boys up in Sturgis, oh, no, 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 you can't do that. Anyway, mm -hmm. Political. I shouldn't do that. Well, but there, there's something there, though, because Zeke and I were having this conversation, um, you know, surrounding a, the jab. If if it was, you know, if they, they try to make it mandatory with the, with the uh, – approval um you know they might try to stick it on our medical card or we may have certain shippers and receivers and part of the reason here in the first world that we're so easily manipulated is because we have so much to lose and we have so much comfort and convenience that we can be threatened with um you know so it's uh it, it's it's much easier to get you to to give up certain freedom i guess or liberty because you you don't want to be uh you don't want to lose that convenience well um <laughs> that's funny richie um i have to use richie as an example i'm gonna pick on him a little bit because richie came to us 23 years old and he'd been working for one of these companies and he was actually the, a senior trainer <laughs> at 23 years old. I get tickled when I say that. But, he, you know, here's a guy that, man, if I could go back to 23, or if I could take any of you guys back to 23 and teach you 
back then, what we're teaching Richie right now, and he's got the rest of his life to benefit from it. You know, if he'd just save the money that this guy right here is going to spend on this lease, if he just put that in the bank right now at 24 and didn't do anything else, yep, it would, it would frighten you what that's worth because of the time value of money that he has. He's the opposite of the problem I deal with, okay? He's got plenty of time. Now, if I can just keep him to quit doing stupid shit, we live long enough to enjoy it. But you come, you, you come to the realization that after, you know, 55 or 60 years, you know, and you don't save any money and you don't plan for your retirement and you don't do, dude, I'm sorry, but it's, it, it, it's tough. You're going to be working for a while, you know, and as much as we can improve your income and teach you how to do it here still. Now, all you guys that are 30 and 35 and 40, come on. Now you know. What's your excuse now? I came in this business. I didn't, there was no instruction manual, okay? I had to put together my own, you know, my own training program. I couldn't, you know, you say what you want to do about Kevin Rutherford. And I don't, he's a little controversial now because of his health stand. But, oh, by the way, truck drivers tend to be pretty unhealthy you know but um anyway we won't get there but anyway i uh, had to figure out what, what what was i going to use as my instruction manual to learn learn this business and how to do it you know I, it didn't exist i had to go find it i put it together now we hand it out for free you know people people comment what well, y'all just give it away yeah, we can give it away. Give it away and still people don't use it, okay? I guess if we, so if we, sold, if we sold it for a bunch of money, they'd value it and use it maybe. I don't know. We're going to start requiring <laughs> a $1,000 subscription for every week of the podcast. Yeah. Maybe then everybody will start using it. You know, but we just give it away, you know? <clears throat> I, had, I had 30 people at the live event last week, paid 250 bucks a seat. We saved them that before lunch. Gave oh, everything yeah. else away, you know? So, look, we're just, I'm just here to try to keep you from making dumb things, making dumb decisions, all right? This business is easy. Business is easy, all right? Take the emotion out of it. And it's easy. You know, you make money. Make a lot of it. More of what you make, the easier it is. Also, more fun it is. You know what's really fun? I mean, I left last Thursday Went to Chicago area and spent all weekend with my grandchildren. Got back home, I don't know, two hours ago. While I was gone, I made a shit ton of money. <laughs> now, yep. not, bra not bragging again, but you work hard enough, you work long enough, it pays off. Easy business to do, guys. Now, is it, is it, it going to take hard? Yeah, absolutely. It's hard work. Hell, what we do is really hard. We've got, so we have multiple issues right now with load problems and things like that. But, you know, it, 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 the, the business is just like trip planning. Now, if you, if you trip plan and you don't make allowances for traffic and for, I don't know, an unexpected maintenance issue or trailer problem you're not trip planning you're just playing fantasy okay oh if it hadn't happened i'd have made it well how many days is it how many days have you had where shit didn't happen it's the same with business you know oh you're lucky you did that no 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 i'm not lucky I just work hard. You know, there's a price you pay. You know, I hear people all the time. They have all the excuses in the world about why they can't do it. You know, but they don't understand that the people that do those, those 5,000 medals that they handed out last week, last two weeks. If you had any idea of the price they paid for those medals, 
Yep. You know, I, I um, th- there's a price you pay. You you make a decision. I remember one time I was at a family reunion. I actually, it was a like a holiday dinner. And my receptionist back in the photography days had failed to put a obligation on the calendar. And we're sitting down to holiday dinner. And I get a phone call and this guy's, where are you? I'm like, what are you talking about? Where are you? I'm having Thanksgiving dinner. Well, no, you're supposed to be here. I'm like, oh. So I call him my reception. I said, what do you know about this? She goes, well, I think I put it in the calendar. Turns out she put it in the wrong month. Now, if I'm a truck driver, I'm like, well, hell, if you need it today, you'll need it worse tomorrow, right? <laughs> but no, I got up. I went and got my crap, and I went over and I did the job. And I apologized for a long time about it. But see, that's the price that you pay. I was an agent at Landstar for a while. One of my toughest customers I had to work to get the freight moved was a, a cross-border load out of Mexico. And I'm struggling with it. And I'm literally, I'm literally at my father's bedside on the day he died. But that's the price you pay for success. been easy for me to go, well, hey, I'm, my dad's dying. I'll deal with this tomorrow. And all you got to do is get up a little early and deliver your load tomorrow. All you got to do is quit making stupid decisions. It's the price yep. you're going to pay. Well, let's roll through some comments here. Let me see if I can find some. Uh, Robin, really enjoyed the podcast, video, blog. I've learned a great deal from you, too. Thank you, Robin. Um, Smoke Bomb, thanks again for the live event a couple weekends ago. I'm assuming that's somebody that was there. Uh, we had a great, we had a really good time. That reminds me, um, uh, I saw a comment here about Carl. I don't know any mechanic that will stay up to 3 a.m. chasing an electrical short and have to be at work at 8 a.m. except Carl. Dude, now on that week, dude, he showed up at the live event. He'd worked all night the night before on a guy's truck at, at, at TA. Now, remember, he gets off 5 o'clock. He worked on his own all night fixing the guy's truck because that's Carl. Drove Get, to the event, was up all day. Event, two hour, worked all day at the event doing inspections and putting on OPS and so on. We found him asleep in his truck and got him up I got and a call. into the I was hotel out, room. I was out behind the hotel drinking beer, and my phone rings. I'm like, um, I need you to come out here. Okay. Carl's passed out in his trailer. And I went in there, and there he was. You know, and I'm like, hey, buddy, let, let's time to go to bed. You know, and he, man, I'm telling you, it was like walking a drunk. I mean, he, he didn't know where he was, you know, and I, took him made sure he actually got to his room and then the next day i don't remember who he told somebody's like watch out i got some sleep i'm ready to go now you know <laughs> and stayed there till three o'clock that morning chasing electrical gremlins on byron's truck you know um i mean the work ethic is just unparalleled i've never seen anything like it uh oh derek <laughs> when you do these leads hey but you have the nicest truck in the truck stop for a year uh that's a relative term let's see oh what's your opinions of these passive income trucking courses well i don't know specifically what you're talking about but i do know that a lot of this if you want to hear somebody go off on passive income go look up gary vaynerchuk um on instagram tiktok he's he's everywhere Um, but the way with the level of profanity that he will use when somebody asks him, because they see passive income as you mean I can make money and not have to work. No, no, but passive income is the passive income strategy is the 21st century version of the pyramid scheme. 
you know, it's just a way to sucker you into buying a course that probably doesn't work. It might work for one percent. It's 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 the least deal of of, of course selling. Um, it's the old get rich quick scheme, you know. Do yeah. it this way; it's easy. You know, I see them. I see them. I know what you're talking about. I see them. But I've never inquired into one of them because, I mean, <clears throat> well, in a, I mean, there is there is a passive income strategy that we employ. Most people are just not willing to work hard enough to get there. You know, I mean, take well, Zeke. Y'all, y'all watched the interview with Zeke. That's passive income. He's not actively working day to day operating the truck we are okay he made his money in crypto he invested in the truck he leased the truck to us we're doing doing the work and he receives passive income off of that now it's not enough for him to live on yet but he wants five trucks and he could live off of five trucks um you know but that's that's technically passive income, but these courses they're going to sell you a course, and the most they're the ones making the passive income. The people that are selling you the course well, that's no, where the money's to be made. That's my point. Okay, you you could say what I do is passive income. Okay, right. Except that our guys make a whole lot more money than me. Okay, so you have to understand there has to be some you know somebody somewhere has to do the work. Somebody somewhere has to make the money. If the money is being made by the passive income person, not the person doing the work, then that's that's a house of cards. Okay. So what I can see of these guys is it's it's trying to get into trucking without owning trucks, which I mean, heck, we do that too. But there, but that 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 win win, I don't know that it's there. I mean, what happens after you pay you the money and buy the course, and then it does? It's like those real estate things that used to you, you all you could always get into real estate with other people's money. Except nobody mm-hmm. ever did it, except the guy who sold the book. You know? Yeah. So if it's not really a real opportunity, it's not really an opportunity. I mean, somebody's going to make some money, okay? But it is it a real opportunity? I mean, again, like he's talking about the the uh, the um, the um, pyramid or multi level marketing kind of a thing. You know, it's uh, it's got to be a real opportunity. The person's going to do it has to make money and there has to be, a, it, it has to be fair. You know, it's not fair for me to make a bunch of money and my guys doing all the driving don't make any, you know, it's just the opposite. Theirs is guaranteed. I'm the one that might not make any. So I'm mm-hmm. the one taking the risk. Sean Chastain. I came into this industry five years ago thinking I could make good money. Five years have passed and nothing good until I came across you guys. Maybe one day I'll get away from this blood sucking company. Well, I appreciate the the feedback, Sean, but I got to encourage you. Maybe one day is a very imprecise statement. Maybe that day's tomorrow. You know, I mean, if you've been in this industry five years and you've got a clean record, you can go find somewhere um, to increase your income. Maybe you have to specialize. Maybe you have to learn how to do tanker. Maybe you got to learn how to do flatbed heavy haul. Maybe you got to go find somebody doing blanket wrap specialized in a van or household goods or whatever it is. You got to make yourself more valuable um, and then go find that value, you know. Um, you know, so, uh, you know, stay after it. But, uh, like doctor or not doctor, but uh, what was it? Zig Ziglar said, if you ha- if you aim at nothing, you'll hit it every time, you know? Um, so go, go get some. Um, I can't find solid or- ROI information on various wind deflector devices. Cause there isn't any, it seems like they would pay off and reduce fuel consumption because they're cheap. Do you know, do you run with them? I well, well, I mean, we, we've, we've got a couple trucks with, uh, air tabs. Um, and I've heard people say good stuff about the flow below, but it seems like a pretty big investment. Um, and Landstar has deflectors on some of their trailers, but. I, and, well, it depends know. on what wind deflector device you're talking about. If you're talking about things to improve aero, Yes, there is a return. It's not huge. And um, obviously, the bigger return, the faster you drive, the bigger return is. But we don't really encourage that because of the fuel. But uh, if you're talking about like those those uh, wings that people put on top of trucks to make them 
a, a, a mid roof match up to a to a trailer not so much because it, it violates the rules of, of aerodynamics so uh, if you're talking about like a top fairing or fairing around i'm not sure exactly what you're talking about but um i will tell you this that the um the trailer air deflectors the only one that's ever really been tested to actually work is the one that they call the the um the um shoot chris the under tray under tray system yeah that one yeah. actually was tested by nasa engineers and it does work the other ones are junk but william haynes i'd rather be a blue loon than a broke fool any <laughs> that's one of our guys he's the guy that made three thousand bucks last week by the way yeah as a company driver with no <clears throat> risk yeah, probably made four times what one of these lease jokers is making. Well, uh, that's an hour and forty. I think uh, I think we've covered it all. Um, we do have yeah. a we do have a surprise secret guest coming up on episode one hundred. Not going to tell yep. you who it is, but four uh, more to go. But uh, make sure you mark your calendars for that one, okay? We're going to have a, a – Yeah, that should be in about a month. Featured guest. So looking forward to it. Yeah. All right, <sighs> well, quit signing lease purchases. Go out and make and save some money. And uh, be safe out there, everybody, okay? All right. See you all next, see you next time. next week.